In 2020, amid a global pandemic, Ford finally launched a highly anticipated product that could restore a beloved brand name, take on the off-road SUV market, and rake in the profits the company badly needs. The product is the Ford Bronco. The Bronco is a name that is familiar to generations of car buyers. First introduced in the mid-1960s, it had a tough, rugged image and symbolized an adventurous lifestyle many Americans aspired to. It lasted for about three decades, during which it endured a fuel crisis and a changing U.S. car market that saw the rapid influx of highly successful imports that challenged American car companies. After it was discontinued, it remained a favorite vehicle for collectors and vintage car fans. And now, it is back, and Ford is capitalizing on both nostalgia and the heightened interest in SUVs and trucks. Ford is promoting the Bronco as an off-road ready sport utility and has debuted a new Built Wild brand campaign around it. Ford is already the strongest brand in full-size trucks and has wowed the market with the Raptor, an innovative off-road version of its best-selling F-150 half-ton pickup. But with the Bronco, Ford is going head-to-head -head with another best-selling brand, the Jeep Wrangler, which is extremely well-established in the off-road SUV segment. Ford is also releasing the Bronco while the United States struggles through the coronavirus pandemic and its resulting economic fallout. The poor timing is no fault of Ford, but with stiff competition and economic strain, the question is, can the second largest U.S. automaker sell a vehicle it has been hyping for years? This Bronco brand represents fun, it represents off-road, it represents kind of some classic American nameplate that goes way back. Those people who remember that history and know that history, they're going to love seeing the nameplate come back. Ford traces the history of the Bronco back to World War II, when the automaker competed for government contracts to make military vehicles. Ford sold 275,000 GPW Jeeps during the war. But the Bronco itself didn't come out for another 20 years, in the 1960s, during a transformative time for Ford. As an aside, there is an early sketch of the Bronco that was the handiwork of McKinley Thompson Jr., the first black designer to be hired by any of the Detroit automakers. The Bronco project was led largely by Don Fry, who had just overseen the launch of the now legendary Ford Mustang, the small two-door pony car that became a massive seller and an iconic American car. The idea with Bronco was to build a sturdy Jeep-like vehicle that would also be able to handle on the highway, something other models at the time were not as strong at. International Harvester and Jeep CJ were the only two kind of viable off-road vehicles uh, in the early 60s. Ford did a lot of market research. We talked to thousands of Jeep owners and thousands of Scout owners uh, to find out what they liked and didn't like about the vehicles. And what we found out is they weren't very good on the highway. When the Bronco came out, Fry said in a press release that there was a new pony in the stable, referring to the fact that both Mustang and Bronco took their names from terms for horses. But the Bronco was not expected to be the runaway success Mustang was. In the 1960s, the off-road vehicle segment was a niche market. It was a vehicle purpose-built for recreation. The early Bronco was only available with two doors, though there was a wagon version which did have a rear seat. It had a Spartan interior, no air conditioning, and few other creature comforts. Over time, some of those were added. The first generation Bronco was actually rather small compared with those that came later. The vehicle was meant to be updated with a larger footprint in the mid-1970s, but the oil embargoes and fuel shortages delayed that plan. The larger Bronco finally did debut in 1978 and was based on the F-Series, Ford's long-running and top-selling line of full-size pickup trucks. The automaker tried to widen the product lineup with a smaller version of the Bronco called the Bronco 2. The vehicle was considered a flop, but it was the precursor to the Explorer, which is now one of the best-selling SUVs of all time. In all, the Bronco ran for about 30 years before Ford pulled the plug. By the late 1990s, market tastes had shifted, and those who were buying Fords wanted the family-friendly Explorer with its four doors. 
not the rough riding Bronco. However, throughout its three decade life, the Bronco did develop a following. It was helped by Bronco's reputation as a desert racing truck, exemplified by its performance in the Baja 500 and Baja 1000 races. Bronco's got a real rich history in, in off-road racing, in particular at Baja. Uh, the vehicle behind me here is the, the Rod Hall, the winning uh, truck in 69 at the, uh, the Baja 1000. It also garnered some fame through popular culture. So when John Paul II made his first visit to the U.S., uh, he was shepherded around during his uh, public visits and a modified Pokemobile Bronco. And there's a great photo of John Paul II at Yankee Stadium waving to the crowds from the back of his Bronco. Since its discontinuation, the vehicle has become highly sought after by collectors. Vintage Broncos fetch high prices. Its cult status and racing history left it poised for a resurrection. For Ford, bringing Bronco back is about reviving a legendary name in a moment when so many customers are turning towards sport utilities, possibly for good. The Bronco's primary target, the Jeep Wrangler, is regarded by many in the industry as one of the strongest brands in the entire automotive world. Apart from a few other models, including perhaps pricey Land Rovers and the also pricey Toyota Land Cruiser, the Wrangler is considered the tough off-road SUV to have. It has a worldwide reputation for its ruggedness and quintessential American identity. It also has an almost religiously devoted fan base. Fiat Chrysler, Jeep's parent, takes its core market seriously. It also benefits from a long history of continuous production. The Wrangler name has been around since the mid-1980s, and its heritage is often traced all the way back to the original Jeep CJ models that were made as military vehicles during World War II. The Wrangler usually doesn't change much from year to year, which could be said to be part of its appeal. The company does listen to its customers and has the benefit of decades of continuous feedback from them on what to improve to make the Wrangler sturdier and more capable off-road. Name notwithstanding, the Bronco, on the other hand, is an entirely new product. Industry analysts note it doesn't have that long, unbroken history of customer input and incremental product improvement. But Ford's chief operating officer, Jim Farley, said in 2020 that the Bronco will be a superior product to the Wrangler. Jeep sold about 228,000 Wranglers in 2019 and 240,000 the year before. That seems like quite a lot, but the question remains as to how many Wrangler buyers are likely to drop a trusted brand they are devoted to and take a chance on something new. The Bronco does have its strengths. The vehicle is a traditional body-on-frame SUV, and it is built on the same platform as the Ranger, Ford's mid-size pickup. The Ranger itself is a revival, first released for the 2019 model year, so that truck has not been around that long either. But Ford's reputation in pickup trucks is strong, so the Bronco may benefit from that association and from the company's expertise in that corner of the market. Ford's pickups, especially the F-150, are considered the company's cash cow. The F-Series is not only the best-selling line of trucks in America, it is the best-selling line of vehicles overall. The F-150 accounts for the bulk of that. The market for off-road vehicles is also bigger than it was when the original Bronco debuted. However, Ford is releasing the vehicle at what could prove to be a difficult time for automotive sales and the economy overall. Some analysts say the Bronco could end up like so many vehicles that have made a big splash during their debut, sold strongly for a year or even a few years, and then watched their sales fall as the shine wore off. Automotive economist Jan Gabrielson has charted the rise and fall in volumes of several vehicles in different segments that generated a lot of excitement when they were introduced. These include the short-lived retro experiments, such as the Chevrolet HHR and SSR and 11th generation Ford Thunderbird, environmentally conscious vehicles, such as the Nissan Leaf, Chevrolet Volt Hybrid and Bolt Electric, and SUVs, such as the once popular but polarizing Hummer vehicles, which General Motors now plans to reintroduce as an electric. Sales of these vehicles seemed to peak very soon after they were introduced, the first year or so, before they declined, sometimes rapidly. 
The Bronco has also drawn comparisons with the Toyota FJ Cruiser, a purpose-built SUV Toyota introduced in 2003, then pulled from the market after the 2014 model year. The vehicle was a hit with hardcore off-road fans and has been a popular choice as a vintage vehicle after its discontinuation in the U.S. There's a real dedicated following behind the uh, Ford Bronco nameplate, and so bringing it back makes sense, especially in this very kind of SUV, happy, SUV hot marketplace that we've got right now. Ford seems to be taking steps to prevent the Bronco from becoming a product whose flame burns brightly, but briefly. Jeep declined to comment on this story. First, Ford is not just releasing a single Bronco. The Bronco is actually a brand within the larger Ford brand, similar to what Mustang has become. The automaker is offering a choice of three vehicles in the hope of capturing a wider swath of customers. Executives have said that more Bronco vehicles could be on the way. There are two-door and four-door versions based on the Ranger platform and a smaller, lower-priced version called the Bronco Sport. There are about six trim levels for the Bronco alone, plus a special first edition version. In designing the Bronco, Ford has also taken customer input seriously and says it has tried to answer needs it thinks are underserved. We spent a lot of time digging through the archives to make sure we really understood the essence of the Bronco brand. Uh, we created uh, expert panels and talked to enthusiasts to make sure we fully understood what Bronco was all about. And for, for us, you know, Bronco had to be really true to what a Bronco always was. For example, many Wrangler drivers like to pull the doors and the roofs off their vehicles. But Ford said its design makes doing this easier, and on the four-door version of the Bronco, all four doors can be stowed in the trunk, a feature not found on the Wrangler. Ford's actually done a, some, some really thoughtful design touches, like being able to stash the doors in the back instead of having to leave them behind. Um, having the mirrors mounted on the fenders instead of on the doors. If you've ever taken the doors off of a Wrangler, you quickly realize I don't have any side view mirrors anymore. There are slide out tables on the rear of the Bronco for camping or tailgating, along with a bottle opener and floodlights on its tailgate. Ford also offers an optional bundle of off-road upgrades called the Sasquatch package, which comes standard on the Bronco's highest trim. Opting for the Sasquatch package makes the vehicle only available with automatic transmission. Manual options are otherwise available, but Ford's North America product communications manager Mike Levine said on Twitter the company is open to changing that if customers want the manual with the Sasquatch package as well. Ford is also trying to build out a community of Bronco drivers that can help sustain interest in the vehicle over time. The automaker is starting a program called Off Rodeo, where new owners are offered a free day and a half clinic in off-road driving and Bronco ownership on one of four courses around the US. There is also an online forum called Bronco Nation for owners and enthusiasts. So this Bronco Nation website is, is up and running and uh, we expect that to be just a great source for building that community we have the opportunity coming in fresh to kind of help organize uh, that community into a singular community where if you want to know the latest Bronco news or just learning about the outdoors, signing up for the off rodeo, you'll go to thebroncoNation.com. The Bronco starts at $29,995, including destination charges, which is just $205 more than a base Jeep Wrangler. Prices for the highest end models top $60,000. If it takes off, the Bronco could be a great moneymaker for Ford. Selling 125,000 Broncos, just more than half the volume of the Jeep Wrangler in 2018, would contribute nearly $1 billion to Ford's North American pre-tax earnings, according to Credit Suisse analyst Dan Levy. He expects Bronco to pull in profits of about $7,500 per unit. That would make Bronco one of Ford's most profitable models. Ford's North America president, Kumar Galocha, projected the company could sell hundreds of thousands of Broncos a year. This all comes at a time when the second largest U.S. automaker is in the middle of a multi-year turnaround. 
CEO Jim Hackett, who took the reins of the company in May 2017, had at times taken criticism for not moving quickly or decisively enough to cut the company's costs and jettison struggling businesses. In August, Hackett said he would retire from Ford, effective October 1st. Ford said COO Jim Farley would take Hackett's place. Ford continues to be challenged in China and has had difficulty with its business in Europe. The Blue Oval unveiled an $11 billion restructuring plan in 2018, which at the time Ford said would take years. But before coronavirus set in, there were some positive signs at the company. Its North American business continued to be strong, in large part due to the success of its full-size trucks. Shares were up more than 21% for the 2019 calendar year. Now, like all automakers, Ford is struggling with the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. As of July 17, 2020, shares had fallen roughly 27% since the beginning of the year. Ford said in late June its sales for the second quarter of 2020 were down 33%, though this was in line with industry expectations. The pandemic also forced the automaker to stop production for several weeks during the quarter. But in late July, Ford released results for the second quarter of 2020 that surpassed even its own expectations. Part of that came from the fact that sales turned around amid the pandemic better than expected, and the company said it already has more than 150,000 reservations for the Bronco. The coronavirus pandemic also raises questions about how well Ford will be able to manage the key product rollouts it had scheduled for the year. The company already had some trouble with the launch of its new Explorer in 2019. Ford had to delay the release of the Bronco and its latest version of its best-selling F-150 due to the circumstances, and it is supposed to roll out its new Mustang Mach-E fully electric vehicle later in the year. The Bronco unveiling already faced some other challenges. Its first adjusted unveiling date, July 9th, happened to fall on the birthday of O.J. Simpson, the former football star and actor who had been accused of killing his ex-wife in the 1990s. At the time he was accused, Simpson was engaged in a televised chase with police in 1994 in a white Ford Bronco. The company said the choosing of the date was just a coincidence, but changed it again anyway. Despite these obstacles, there has been little question among auto industry insiders that the Bronco was always a highly anticipated product. It is also a vehicle that plays to Ford's strengths, and it is a fresh entry in the sport utility segment customers are clamoring for. Finally, Ford says it has been careful to build a Bronco worthy of the name, a true off-roader. Kind of started with the built for tough testing, and then we've added to that and taken Broncos out to the toughest trains that we could find, like Johnson Valley and uh, you know all the different uh, trails that we could find out there to really test it out. We have the capability on the vehicle uh, to ensure that it's got the right capability, so all Broncos are 4x4. Four four. And then there's an element of the authentic design. Success or failure, it is a sign that Ford is focusing its attention on a market it knows well and can succeed in capable trucks and SUVs built mostly for Americans.